Hello, teacher. Can I ask you a question before the class? Good morning. Good morning. Did you hear what I say? Yes, I go ahead. Oh, yeah, thank you. It's about APA. Um, when you when you when you take a direct citation and you you put it in the in the middle of a paragraph, um, do you capitalize the first letter? of the yeah of the citation i mean if you take it directly for from something some from somewhere and then you put it in the middle of a paragraph is it necessary to capitalize the first letter if and you don't have a period before okay so it's a are you asking about a direct quote or when yes. you paraphrase no a direct quote all right, so if it's a direct quote in the middle of a paragraph and I'm, ass I'm assuming you're going to begin a sentence with a direct quote, is that right? Yes. So you have a sentence before it ending with a period. No, 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 and, not ending no? with a period. It's just like uh, in the middle of the paragraph, but not having a period. And then I want to put a direct, direct citation. And I don't know if the direct citation begins with a capital letter should like if I should put it like that. So when do you mean you're saying in the middle of a paragraph, do you mean in the middle of a sentence? Yes. Oh, OK, so. In the middle of a sentence, I would have to look at it. Uh, you would. Um, it, it depends on. Yeah, I'm. So your question is, do you capitalize? Yes. Uh, oh, the word? can I show you an example? Yeah, show me show me your example. If you can maybe either I don't know if you have it in a document or if you can copy and paste as, it as, as a, a photo. It's in the forum and not in a photo in a photo on oh, a photo. OK, if yeah. can, can you upload the photo in the chat? Yes. Ready. All right. Uh, OK, so here they're capitalizing. Yeah, so. To answer your question, I think it's going to depend. The example that you're showing shows a capital letter because I think. It's a complete sentence. I can't see the it looks like it's cut off a little bit, but I'm assuming where it says the essence of this type as the space right until space it looks like that that's a complete sentence so in that case you would use a capital letter because that's a complete sentence but sometimes you know uh, someone will claim something and you're going to quote it but maybe it's a phrase right maybe it's even a, it's one word right so in that case i would not capitalize so it would just depend on whether what you're quoting is a complete sentence or if if it's just a, uh, a, f a phrase or a word. Oh, OK. Yeah, that was my question. Thank you, okay. teacher. You're welcome. All right, guys, good morning. Hello, Omar, Eileen, Vanessa, Caro. Good morning, teacher. Elizabeth, oh, hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Lisette. Been... All righty, let's get right to it, shall we? I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Today we're going to continue basically what we were working on yesterday. And let me open up Microsoft Teams. First, as a reminder, yesterday I posted in the uh, Microsoft Teams uh, chat there. I shared with you guys an ePortfolio Excel spreadsheet. I'll go ahead and open it up now. You can access it from the post that was uh, from yesterday. I think I posted it, it looks like around 840. 
or you can access it via files, the ePortfolio folder, and here is where you can also access this Excel spreadsheet. So if you have not done so already, please add your name and your LinkedIn profile link and also the link to your ePortfolio. All right, we're working this week on your ePortfolio. Some of you may already have your portfolio. Even if you're still working on your portfolio, go ahead and include the link if you have it. Um, and um, if you're still looking for an e-portfolio, I think probably today would be a good time to make that final decision and uh, create your own e-portfolio space uh, for this for this assignment. Again, if you have one set up already, feel free to use that. Even if you set up one in another class and you like you like that platform, you like that uh, service, feel free to use that. Um, today, what I'd like to do is to continue giving you guys feedback in your educational philosophy and also ask, answer any questions or doubts that you have or challenges that you're facing setting up your e-portfolio. Um, now, the, the, e, the educational philosophy... You know, I know some of you have been including it in your LinkedIn profile, so feel free to bring it on over to this Word Online, uh, this shared Word Online document. By today, everyone should have something in this document. All right, I really want to, uh, you know, take advantage of this week and give you some feedback um, with your writing and. I submitted your grades for your your third academic, I'm sorry, your academic essay from unit three. And later today, I'm gonna to be sending you a PDF file with some of my, uh, with additional feedback, okay, about, about your grade. But all of your grades have been uploaded. And I really want to stress, since all of you guys are gonna be teachers, I want you to think about the importance of formative feedback, formative assessment. And what I mean by formative assessment, for the purposes of like what we do a lot of, right? Like when you guys submit your paragraphs up here and I leave comments up here, this is, this is a form of formative assessment. Formative in the sense that it's helping you learn about different aspects of, of writing, whether it's grammar, whether it's content, organization, coherence, co uh, cohesion, unification, whatever the type of aspect that you're learning about when you're writing, right? The only way that I can help you is if you give me something that I that we can start with. Okay, so I'm not expecting a perfect paragraph in this document. This is like a a laboratory. If you want to think of it as a laboratory, this is not for a grade. It's not for a grade directly, I should say that. But does it affect your final grade? Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? And I hope that this has been clear throughout the semester for you, is that the time that we have back and forth communicating, whether it's through the live chat, whether it's through an online document, the, the feedback that I provide, the questions that you provide me, this back and forth communication, this is the, the basis for formative assessment. I mean, you can't have formative assessment unless you have this type of communication. And you guys know this, right? You're gonna be teachers, you're already teaching maybe in some of your cases, you're out there, you know that you have to set up this, this channel of communication in order for formative assessment to exist. Okay, so, you know, you have noticed in my classes, especially if you've taken my classes before too, and in this semester, we use a lot of formative assessment. And I always try to build in to the, the lessons time to communicate. This is a perfect example this week, right? So take advantage of uploading and submitting your work. I really, I want to give you this feedback. I want to have this time with each of you. And, you know, unfortunately, I, and I, I like giving you guys feedback, and, but I, I feel like there are some of you that I don't have the same opportunities. Like, 
you know, I don't have the same opportunities to provide you feedback. And I want to do that. Right. But it's it's up to you. So when I grade and you're looking at the your grades for your essays, for 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 these types of writing assignments where we build in a lot of time to go back and forth and and look at the document and, and the text and make changes and ask questions. I mean, this is that this is the process, especially for writing. You know, writing is is a hard thing to do for for anyone. It's hard for me. It's hard for anyone in any language. It's difficult because we have to think about a lot of different things at the same time. And so this is why this week I really want to give everyone feedback so that you're you're making some changes. All these doc, all the, this text here that we're working on, this educational philosophy, this is going to be published publicly, right? So everyone's going to be able to see it. So I want you to have the best version of your text out on your website. I don't want you to publish your first draft, and I hope that you don't want that either. I'm assuming that you don't want that either. I'm assuming that we're working together, that you're comparing your educational philosophy with your classmates, you're taking my suggestions into consideration, and you're comfortable enough to ask questions to see in what areas that you can improve upon in your text, okay? So it's a little soapbox here, but I, it's, it's to encourage you. It's, in, it's to encourage all of you, right? Not just some of you. I want to encourage all of you to upload your text, to ask questions, to receive feedback, to feel comfortable with the process of accepting suggestions and trying to act on those suggestions. And I can tell you, when it comes down to the grade, I remember these experiences, this communication. It, it all comes into play when I factor in to, to the grade. It's like, have I had communication with this person or not? Or is this the first time I'm looking at this document? Okay, so again, a word of encouragement to everyone, all of you. All right, I'm not just here for some of you. I'm trying to be here for everyone. But the only way that I can help you is if you give me something that I can uh, look at. Okay, so today I want to focus on educational philosophy. Go ahead and upload, of course, ask questions. I've left comments. Those of you who have uploaded to this document, I've left uh, some comments. Please continue to remove the comments. Feel free to remove those as you're modifying your text. If you're still working on your text, of course, keep the comments out there until you've had a chance to make those changes. And uh, if you have questions, um, the easiest way, I, it actually, if you ask questions in the Word document, which I think you can reply to these comments, I sometimes miss those because uh, if there are several comments, I'm likely to miss them. So if you have questions in the live session, of course, bring it up in the live session. Um, or you can send me a, a chat. That's probably the best if you have a specific question about your text. Okay, just so that I don't miss your questions in kind of buried in the comments that we have currently in the Word document. All right, so are there any questions about the educational philosophy uh, in terms of, you know, what we need to try to achieve and how we need to write it up? Remember that the educational philosophy is a personal philosophy in the first person. It's about you. It's not your philosophy about teachers or you know the other teachers. This is your own personal philosophy about you as an individual practitioner. Um, so I would try to keep it in the first person, and then I also would try to avoid saying, I believe. Since this is all in the first person and everything that you say is what you believe, then it's not necessary to say, I believe, I think, tampoco, right? So no I thinks and no I believes. Just say just say what it is that you believe, your, your uh, philosophy, and uh, again, keep it in the first person, keep it about yourself. 
Any questions about the ePortfolio? We can also address questions, or if you want me to look at something. Yeah, I have a question. Yes, go ahead. Mm, you told us that we could add like information or assignments from other um, subjects. Is that, well, is that a must or? No, that's, that's correct. Yeah, that's correct. I encourage you. I want you to include anything that you want in your e-portfolio as long as, as it relates to you as a professional, as a teacher, right? As, and think of it in three categories. Think about whatever you include in your e-portfolio as showing what you know, your understandings, your knowledge. Number two, something that shows off your skills, your abilities, and number three, something that relates to, uh, shows your, your values, your attitude, your disposition. Okay, so you can think of it in terms of those three, but as a, as a professional. And yes, I encourage you to include anything in your e-portfolio. It's not going to be part of the grade, right? I'm only going to grade the products that we've completed in this class. But the idea here is that you, all of you are contributing to this one personal e-portfolio. Not that you have an e-portfolio for every class that you have in the BA, but that you have one personal e-portfolio throughout your, your, your experience here at the university. And that you're contributing, the different classes may contribute to that one personal e-portfolio. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. So today, guys, try to, if you haven't already, upload your educational philosophy to this Word document. And if you haven't already, please include the link to the Excel spreadsheet that we just looked at earlier. And I'll take a look. Again, I would like to look at them throughout the week, give you some feedback, and, and even with the ePortfolio, I'll be looking for things like, uh, is it easy to navigate? Can I easily find your content? Does it look professional? Now, look professional, what I mean by that is it easy to read? Do the colors, do the contrast of the colors, right? The background color and the text color, are they easy to read? Right? We don't want to make it really difficult to read based on the color scheme that we have. And most of the themes that come with these services like Wix, Weebly, Google Sites, they're going to have default themes that, for the most part, are going to be good options for you to choose from uh, in terms of color schemes and, and even navigational options uh, for you, right? But th those are things we're looking for is, can you find the information easily? Does it have your name? Make sure you have your name at the top. Probably include a picture at some point. Maybe have a picture in the home page, or maybe you, ha you create an about me page, right? A page that's just about you where you can put some personal information. And speaking about the About Me page, the question might be, well, where do I put the educational philosophy in my, um, my e-portfolio? I think one of the, the best places to put it is in the About Me page, right? So you can go into the About Me page. Maybe you find the link to your uh, LinkedIn profile, your resume, essentially. It's your online resume. And maybe you have um, your educational philosophy there in the About Me page. Okay, so most of the wikis and the, the, the not wikis, but the Weeblies and the Wixes pages out there, they will come with an About Me page. Like it'll be part of the, the, the format that, that, that you have. There may be a time where you have to add maybe a page, but we can look at that if you're not sure. But do have a page that is just about you. It's a more of a personal uh, page. And include your picture. That's a good place also to, to include your pictures in your About Me page. Your picture, your educational philosophy, your link to your LinkedIn profile or your online resume. And then your other sections, your other pages in your ePortfolio are going to be designed and organized however you wish 
right? But you're going to, that's where you'll find your, your essays, right? Your uh, business correspondence, your recommendation letter, your purpose statement, right? These are all products that you can include, that you need to include, in fact, in your e-portfolio. Uh, teacher? Yes. Uh, I already did my e-portfolio on Google Sites, and I wanted to see if you could look at it to to see if I'm going for good. All right. Did you include the link uh, in the Excel spreadsheet, uh, Omar? Uh, I put the link for the link, my link it. If you can, okay, you're cutting out a little bit. If you, can you add the link to your e-port? I'm sorry, the Excel spreadsheet, and then I'll access the link from there. Okay. Or I can, well, yes, wait. Well, either way, whatever is easiest, that's fine, or. Oh, is, is that I didn't see the section of the e-portfolio in the spreadsheet worksheet. Um, okay, do you see it now? Yes, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Now it should right. be there. Okay. All right. Um, good. So I like how you have your name here at the top. And you have kind of a welcome here in the home page. So I, I, that's a good touch there. I think I would use and instead of but in your welcome statement where you say, but I am currently performing. Mm -hmm. And I would call it an exchange. I would say an exchange program. Mm, okay. And I, I don't know if it's necessary to mention that it's a semester or whatever, just an exchange program at the University of that Autonoma. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, now this is something and um, that you, what I would take into consideration. So a lot of these formats, a lot of these services, they're going to provide you with kind of a stock uh, website, right? So they're going to fill in some with uh, they're going to fill in the website with kind of stock images and stock text. And this would be an example here where there's work experience, job openings. Um, well, no, that this is probably yours. Did you change all of this, Omar? Uh, yes, the images I put, I took them from the Creative Commons, and the links that are below the images are the ones that you asked us to, to ah, okay. use. Okay, perfect. Okay, perfect. perfect. All right. Mm -hmm. So, so, okay, that's great. So that's fine. Some sometimes though, there'll be some websites though that will have like this information will be like gibberish. It won't be anything. It'll be just a, a stock uh, text. Mm -hmm. And so for, for those of you who have that, uh, go ahead and remove any extraneous uh, text, images, pages that really don't apply uh, to your case, right? So uh, it, sometimes it's just a matter of kind of cleaning up the website, right? If you're, if you're starting from scratch, if you're starting a new website, you're probably going to need to go in and remove some things or at least replace depending on you know, what you want to include, right, in your, uh, in your space. And of course, if you have work experience, you can also include that as well, right? Um, this is the thing that I would, I would try to decide on. I think this is something, a decision you guys are going to need to make is how much information do you, should you include in an e-portfolio versus what should you include in your resume? Remember that the e-portfolio is to complement 
the resume. It's not necessarily there to replace it. I mean, you could, you could just have put everything into the e-portfolio, but I'm going under the assumption that you have an online resume, a more traditional type of resume, and then the e-portfolio is really dedicated towards your uh, more specific examples of what you know, what you can do in your disposition. All right, but this is, you, you ultimately you're gonna make this decision and if you wanna include work experience, by all means, go for it. Um, but I just want you to think about that the e-portfolio is usually in conjunction with your, your, port, your uh, online resume, okay? And you're, you're likely to present both when you go to uh, some sort of job interview or even a, an educative interview, right, where you, this would help you uh, get in and have better opportunities. All right, so you have a uh, educational philosophy, good. Now here's what I like about Omar's example here. So first of all, there's consistency. So notice that this text here, It looks consistent to me with this text. Okay. Just double check that you want to be consistent with the text. And notice that sometimes when you copy and paste, if you're working in Microsoft Word and you're copying from that document into this kind of space, sometimes this will happen. You'll get a white background. Right? So be careful to uh, remove any formats that are brought over when you copy and paste. If you're typing directly into your ePortfolio, you're not going to have this problem. But sometimes you copy and paste formats from one space to another. And uh, just be careful with, with that. All right, so good. Good contrast here. All right, uh, you have the title. I would capitalize the main words of your title just as you've done in your, in your document but you have paragraphs here. Now, there might be, notice here that it looks like he's got single space and double space. That's fine if you don't have exactly the same format, spacing format as what you were asked to do in the Word document. Okay, what you have here looks good, and I would leave it the way it is. Obviously, we can't, we can't do a page break online, so that's fine. If there is a way to remove this white space, if you can remove, if you can move this up higher, mm -hmm. I, I think it would look a little bit better. Um, okay. And uh, I probably, yeah, okay, this looks fine. This looks good here. You're respecting the 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 reverse indentation, so that looks good. But yeah, I would try to remove this white space if possible. But I think everything else that you have here is fine. All right, so what I like here is I like how you have unit one, you have unit two, unit three, unit four. So it's very easy to find information. Now, you're deciding to create this one space, right, for, uh, for, this, for this class, and that's fine. Some of you might be thinking in terms of the standards that we talked about, I think, on Monday. And it's possible, especially if you're including information from other classes, that this menu up here, this navigational menu, might be organized slightly differently. You might have a, uh, a standard here. Maybe this, this relates to, let's say, uh, skill development. Maybe this link up here refers to uh, teaching methodologies. Maybe this replies to applied linguistics. Maybe this one, this link applies to the practicum, the teaching practicum. And then Maybe you have sub pages underneath, and it's organized, you know, in some other way. Maybe it's organized by skill. Maybe it's organized by class. Maybe it's organized by something else, a level, skill level, right? It totally depends on how you want to organize your ideas, but do pay close attention to how you're organizing your, your e-portfolio, right? So that it's easy to find information. All right, so unit two, we've got, now here, the only thing I would, 
say here, so you've got the unit one's not a problem because it's an essay. And mm -hmm. um, I'm just thinking here, if I click on unit two, there's really nothing here. So I'm wondering if in your design, if there's a way to not have this page show up that force the 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 uh, the user to go down here, so that I'm not sure. Just check that. It's not a big deal, but um, oh well. Yes, I can change it, but I decided to make it that way in order for to be separate. Um, for not putting the recommendation letter and the formal email together. But if you want, I can put them just mm -hmm. like in the unit one. No, no, I, I think, no, I like what you have here with the recommendation letter and the formal email separate. No, I like that. My comp, my point here is uh, the unit two, this page, like maybe you have a, a simple paragraph that says this unit two relates to business correspondence or something just because okay. you don't have much information. That's my only point. Um, okay, yes. I you know, sometimes, that. yeah, sometimes I think there's an option where you don't, uh, you, there's this isn't even a, a page like that. You don't even all it does is it says unit two, but it doesn't take you to a page. It it forces you to choose one of these options, and so that was my point. If you can set it up that way, then you yes, don't have a page like this with no information. So it, it it's not a big deal, right? But it's just a suggestion, okay? But I yes. like no, I like how you have it separate, and and this is important too especially for unit two where we have several different products make sure that you have a separate page for each product make you make sure you have one page for the recommendation letter and one page for the purpose statement one letter for the per, the professional email and you might even have a separate page for the cover letter right even though it's part of the online portfolio maybe you have a separate page for the cover letter mm -hmm. right so um, I would, if there's a way to single space this, now this is different than what we talked about perhaps in, um, in the word document, but what we want to try to achieve is we don't want a lot of white space if we okay. can avoid it. So if we can remove some of this white space here in between the greeting and the paragraphs, right? Even cordially, maybe you can bring this up a little bit, right? It doesn't have to be like right underneath, but just so that we don't have so much white space. Um, you know, if, if you can manage, it's just a slight detail, but other than that, that looks good. Formal email. So you're still working on your purpose statement to bring it in? Oh, yes, I, I forgot to include it. And he, yeah, so again, I would like remove this extra white space here between mm -hmm. the greeting, dear, and then the first paragraph. And probably remove this extra space between these paragraphs. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's that looks good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like I like this space here. See how you have this space? Compared yeah, to but this, the other one is double. yeah. Uh, yes. So I like this. I like the this uh, spacing here that you have for your looks like your third, fourth, and fifth paragraphs. Maybe reduce the spacing between your first two paragraphs a little bit. Okay. Yeah, and this for me, this looks better with the references higher. Now, tr if you can do what you did in the first essay, I would do the same in terms of the indentation. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I'll change it. Okay, good. Now the limericks, the limericks. Here's what I would do, guys, for the limericks to add a little bit to each one of these. I would try to include an image for each of your uh, poems. Mm -hmm. For each of your poems, try to include a an image that's under the Creative Commons license. So uh, we talked about searching through uh, Creative Commons search. See if you can find a... <clears throat> An image, and then I would include the link to that image to pay attribution back to the owner uh, within each of these pages. I would capitalize the main words of each of your poems. Make sure you have a title, as you as you have here, Omar. Your Saint okay. Cain, 
That's good. I would capitalize bird and include an image. Mm -hmm. If you guys want to go crazy, if I were, you know, if it were me, I would also upload an audio file of me reciting the poem. That's oh. what I would do. Because all of you, you guys spend a lot of time working on reciting your poems. I think this would be a really good place to also include an audio. Now, you don't have to. It's not going to be for a grade, but I encourage you to do that. This is more for you than it is for this class. And if you're proud of your, uh, the way in which you recited your poems and you want to demonstrate that, then, then include it. You could have your title, the poem, an image, and an audio file. And I think that would really complement each of these poems in a nice way and have one page for each of your poems that contain all of those items. Okay? So mm -hmm. let's see what else here. We got the time film. Okay. And the sonnet. Mm hmm. Looks good, Omar. Looks okay. good. And uh, did you have. Do you have an about me page? This is who I guess this is the about yes, me, right? Yes, All right. And the only thing I would add here is I don't see a link to your LinkedIn profile. Oh, yes, I can put it right below my welcome um, paragraph. All right. And, um, and then once you have completed your, let's see, do you have your educational philosophy? Yeah, so I'm kind of like on the fence here about do we include the educational philosophy under who am I? I almost feel like your educational philosophy would be better served in the who am I, because that's who you are. This is your educational okay. philosophy, right? Mm -hmm. So it's up to you, but um, you know, you think about whether you want to have the educational philosophy under the who am I page, or if you wanted to have it separate, uh, separately and you know this who am i you could include things like what yeah the, see because for me the educational philosophy you're t if you're talking about you know, your goals and all of that it might make more sense to have it under who am i okay great yeah. Yes. But yeah but it looks good omar and i like the navigation all the colors look good it's easy to read and uh, yeah looks good mm -hmm. thank you I will, I will make the changes all right. Uh, one thing I mentioned about uh, establishing your goals and your educational philosophy, try to articulate your goals without saying, these are my goals. Okay, so think about expressing your objectives and goals as a professional, but not necessarily saying, these are my goals. Try to, to do that without saying, these are my goals, without using the, that, those, that phrase and see what you can come up with. All right. Anyone else? I'll go ahead and mute my mic. You guys just jump in if you want me to look at something, if you have any. I have a question. Okay. So you mentioned that we have to use uh, images from the, what What was it? What was the name? Creative, Creative Commons. Commons. Yes. yes. What if we use the images that like the ones that are already in Wix, for example, me that I'm using Wix. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's up to you if you want to. I, my personal opinion would be to try to personalize it a little bit more. But, um, you know, I don't know what the license agreement is with the images that are, are in Wix, right? So you might want to... I, the time that it would take to look up, you know, the, you know, unless it's a, it's a, it's under the public domain, right? If those images are under the public domain, then you know you don't have a problem. Um, but the time it would take to really investigate and see whether, you know, what kind of license those are under, you could probably, in less time, find an image that's more suitable to what you want to do. But it's up to you. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. This is a link, guys, to the Creative Commons search that I mentioned. 
You can access it by going to search.creativecommons.org. Or if you're using DuckDuckGo, my favorite search engine, you can type in exclamation mark CC and then type in whatever it is you want to find. And you'll, you'll also be taken to the Creative Commons search page with the images that you're looking for. Uh, teacher, is it better if I write? Uh, Omar, can you type in your question in the chat? You were cutting out a little bit. Uh, yes. Okay, Omar, your question is, is it better to write my educational philosophy or just write out educational philosophy? Uh, if you're using the term uh, as a heading in your navigational bar, then I would just write out educational philosophy. If you're writing it within the page, right, you could you could say my educational philosophy, like if it's like in the, the page, but it, it's essentially the same thing. Uh, you just want to make sure if you're writing out, um, you know, sentences that you're writing complete sentences and that might determine whether you write my educational philosophy or educational philosophy. But in terms of a heading, then I think it's pretty much the same. But again, I think that if you're looking at the navigational menu, on your home page, usually the is the fewer words the better. Okay, I'm looking at some of you guys' uh, e-portfolio. Just a couple of comments here. Um, for those of you who have already started an e-portfolio and you already have some work that you've already uploaded, uh, you may need to go in and reconsider how you want to organize that information versus the information that you're going to be including for the course, for this course. Um, so you may need to move things around depending on how you want to organize your products. Okay. And uh, another thing too, is I would, it's up to you, okay, this is just a suggestion. I wouldn't post your e, your email on your home page. Now, some of the formats, when you guys create your pages, you might have a page that's uh, called the contact page. And I think this is a, a better option instead of including your email where you can configure and include your email, so to speak. You can you can put your email into this context so that when somebody sends you this information, um, it goes to your email, but without giving up your email, right? So because this is going to be a public space, my suggestion my suggestion would be not to include your your email, uh, just so that you don't get a lot of spam. You don't get a lot of uh, emails that maybe you don't want to get. So I would also uh, consider not including your phone number or any personal information that you don't want to give to the entire world. Um, I think a contact page, just like what Elizabeth has here, is uh, just enough, right? If somebody wants to send you information about them to reach you for whatever reason, uh, this, I think, is a good option. And you can decide if you want to link your Facebook or Twitter, if you have additional uh, social media sites. Just keep in mind that this is an e a professional and personal e-portfolio. 
And so if you're not comfortable sharing your Facebook, if the, you don't think that that really is going to contribute to, uh, you know, you as a professional, then I would think carefully before linking any of those social media sites that are perhaps more social in nature and less professional. But it depends on your your online identity. Or it depends on how you're organizing your own online spaces. Uh, so... But just be careful with what you share, what you not, what you, you know, what you share in your e-portfolio. Teacher. Yes. Now, well, now that you're in my e-portfolio, can you check the part where it's academic writing? But I've only uploaded the poems and the essays, not the not the rest. Okay. All right. So. So I like, overall, I really like the navigation. So you can navigate up here. I like that. You can also navigate from the home page. So that's cool. And I like your introduction here, uh, here at the bottom. Okay. You might, again, you might think about this, this information down here. And, uh, and then I also like how you're thinking ahead about including other pieces of information. Here's other products that you've completed. Now, um, yeah, this the thing here is I like it. I like the organization here. You can select any of these. Um, my only I'm thinking ahead, though. I'm thinking, let's say, when you go into, um, I don't know, maybe you go into uh, academic writing in seventh semester or even your thesis seminar when you produce your thesis. And let's say that you choose later on to share this where you might where you might add this right so for right now this looks good um, i'm thinking if you continue to add more products it could get more difficult to find different pieces of information again the way it is right now it's it's fine i i think it's very clear you've got your essays here and everything else is kind of around it um, but you can decide later if you start to get more information, you might choose a different way or an alternative way to organize the information. Um, so yeah, but I like I like what you have here. It's very clear. I would uh, write references as upper and lower case. Okay, just as you have it, but just uh, write it in upper and lower. Um, and same way with words, try to avoid any cases where you're, uh, you're writing all uppercase. Try to avoid writing an all uppercase. And um, uh, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if you can italicize. If there's a way to italicize, I would do that. If not, then that's fine. But yeah, I like, I like the... Uh, I like uh, what you have here. Ah, that's cool. I like that. That's pretty cool. I like that. So it kind of it you you put the cursor over. Yeah, I don't know if there are any settings. I mean, I like how it, it pops up. It'd be nice if it stayed up even after. But that's a personal choice. That's just my own personal thing. So, But yeah, that looks cool. And same thing, it, the image is good. If you want to include the, the audio also, if there's a way to upload an audio, like an MP3, uh, that would be nice too, to, to, to hear the poem being recited. That would be a nice effect, but that's optional. It's not a requirement, but if you want to do that. Uh, let's see, Sin Kane. Uh -huh. Yeah, so some of these formats are really nifty, I think. They're really cool, and uh, that you can do a lot of things. Is this a Wix site? Is that right? Is it? Yes, it's Wix. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. That's nice. That's good. I like it. 
Yeah, I encourage you guys to yeah, and if if you have like all of these images, I wouldn't worry about, you know, a link. These are more like uh, you know, clip arts and things like that. I mean, yeah, if you want to just leave it. Um some of the stock images have been used so many times that you probably want to be more original and use your own. But yeah, these like clip arts are fine. Okay, anything else? Do you have your purpose statement? No, you're still working on that, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that looks good, um, Elizabeth. The only thing is thinking about uh, maybe in the future. And again, you can change this obviously later on, you know, but uh, it looks fine. The the thing here, I'm wondering about the educational philosophy, my work. Um, I, I'm like on the, let's see, I don't know. I'm wondering if you could have a, a page, one page for it, like called about me or yeah, either about, I've heard it, I've seen it written out just about, and then I've also seen it about me, but maybe you have one page where you have your contact, where they can contact you, you have your educational philosophy and, you know, any other personal information you have. Um, that would be, that's something that comes to mind. Or you include your educational philosophy in the, the, the main page. If that's, you know, if you want to focus on, on that uh, from the very beginning, right? Including the educational philosophy instead of writing like the introduction I have right there? Well, you could, you could include both. You know, you could include this little introduction that you have here and then just below my educational philosophy. Or you could have an about me page where you include essentially it would be the same page, but add if you can add to it your educational philosophy, that would be another option. But then just have one page up here, one option that's called about me. I see both as an option. You can decide, I think, which which you you'd prefer. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, guys, uh, looks like we're, we need to wrap it up here for today. This is precisely what I want to do for the rest of this week, uh, is to go in, look at your e-portfolios, give you guys feedback. I want you to share your e-portfolios, take a look at your classmates to get some ideas, as well as your educational philosophy. And, uh, of course, continue to send me uh, messages via chat if you want me to look at something outside of class. All right, I think we'll go ahead and stop there for today, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you tomorrow. Thank, Thank you, you bye.